This video is about reciprocal trig functions. Very often we have situations where we want to consider 1 over sine theta, or 1 over cos theta, or 1 over tan theta. And instead of writing 1 over sine theta all the time, there's another function we can consider which is cosec theta. Cosec actually is short for cosecant. 1 over cos theta, instead of writing 1 over cos theta, we can write sec theta. And that's actually short for secant. And 1 over tan theta is cot theta. It actually stands for cotangent. It's a tiny bit confusing in that the uh, sine theta has got the cosec. So you might think that's the 1 over cos theta, but it isn't. 1 over sine theta is cosec theta. 1 over cos theta is sec theta, 1 over tan theta is cot theta. And these are important definitions that you need to remember. That T didn't come out properly. There we are. It's cot, cot theta. So we've got cosec theta, sec theta and cot theta. Now, with any function, it's important to understand what the graph looks like. So, firstly, let's look at y equals sec x. So, it's worth looking at this in detail. This is sec x. Remember that the cosine of naught is 1, so the sec of naught is 1 divided by 1. The cosine of pi by 2 is 0, so that's why at pi by 2 we've got an asymptote because 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Uh, similarly for the cosine of pi, cosine of pi is minus 1, so at this point where we've got minus 1 here, there it is, um, then 1 divided by minus 1 is minus 1. So these numbers go 1 2, 3, 4, 5. So half of pi is 1.57, there it is. So pi by 2, half of pi is an asymptote. Pi is 3.1415926. There we are, just above 3. So at that point it's minus 1, and so on. The arrow doesn't seem to want to come, but there we go. So at this point here, uh, we've got the cosine of 3 pi by 2, which is 0. 3 pi by 2, cosine of that is 0. 1 divided by 0 is infinite, so this is an asymptote. Similar sort of thing for y equals cosec x. So the sine of 0 is 0, so 1 divided by 0 is infinite, so the cosec of 0 is infinite. So that's why that is an asymptote. The sine of pi by 2 is 1, so here's pi by 2, 1.57. The sine of pi by 2 is 1, so the cosec is 1 divided by 1, which is 1. And a similar sort of arrangement for co, uh, cotangent, or cot x. The tangent of 0 is 0, so here we've got an asymptote. The tangent of uh, pi by 2 is infinite, uh, so therefore the cotangent, the cot of pi by 2, is 0, and so on. Now you may be asked to prove some trig identities. Here we're asked to prove that cos theta plus sine theta tan theta is equivalent to sec theta. This symbol here, three lines, looks a bit like an equals sign. It means is equivalent to, so it's saying show that this will always be equal to that. If it just had two lines here, it would be an equation where you have one or two or three answers or so on. But this is saying it's always true. Now the way to prove something is to start with the left-hand side of the equation and end up with the right-hand side. So the left-hand side is cos theta plus sine theta tan theta. And as you know, tan theta is sine over cos. So it's sine theta times sine theta all divided by cos theta because tan is sine over cos. So what have we got? We've got cos theta and then we've got sine squared theta over cos theta. We've got to add fractions, so let's make the 
bottom number the same, let's make it cos theta. So the top needs to be multiplied by cos theta in order to make this work. So that's cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. As you remember, cos squared plus sine squared, that's 1. So that's 1 over cos theta. And then 1 over cos theta is sec theta. And that is the right hand side. So therefore the proof is complete. Now writing proof complete at the end is essential. If you want to, if this were an examination question, you would lose marks without doing this equals right hand side and having proof complete at the end.